Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can comment on the mental health, personality, and behavior elements of the community known as the incels, so the involuntarily celibate. Now, the members of this community and some of the specific people I'll be talking about are, of course, real people. So I'm not diagnosing anybody here, just speculating on what could be happening in a situation like this. So as I indicated, the term incel stands for involuntarily celibate. And I've only really ever heard this term referring to males who want to have sex with females. I suppose it could be used in other situations, but again, I've only heard incel used in that way. So the word involuntary, of course, means that someone doesn't have a choice. And in this case, the word celibate means not having sex. Although the original definition for celibate meant someone who doesn't get married. So the not having sex part was really implied with the not getting married part. Now the incel ideology, I'll just call it that ideology, is distinct from the MGTOW ideology. That's the men going their own way community. Although technically someone could be a member of both communities at the same time. Now this construct, this incel construct, is more than just heterosexual males who are unable to find a partner. There's an underlying ideology behind this community. So just like with any philosophy or ideology, the beliefs are going to be on a continuum. And there are people who identify themselves as incels who don't necessarily believe in the more extreme elements of this ideology. It's worth noting that some of the incel forums restrict the post containing violent or extreme views. So we see some self-regulation in the community starting to happen. In this video, I'm really going to be focusing on the incel ideology in the context of extremist behavior. So what does this incel ideology look like? Well, the first thing to understand is it's not a well-organized community. It mostly exists online, and some of the online communities have been abolished or restricted. And we saw this with Reddit some time ago. They banned the incel subreddit. But even within this fragmented community that is not standardized, we do see some literature detailing some of the more common beliefs of this group. So as I mentioned before, the incel ideology is more than just men frustrated because they are not successful at finding a female partner, but rather it's a form of male supremacy. Members of the incel community, I'm just going to refer to them as incels, incels believe that they have the right to have sex, and that when women are not attracted to them or withhold sex, those women are violating those men's basic rights, the basic rights of the incels. This group seeks vengeance against women in general for this behavior, but they direct a lot of anger toward the most attractive women. They refer to these women as Stacy's, and they direct a lot of anger toward the most attractive men who are having sex with the attractive women. They refer to these men as Chad's. So in the incel ideology, you have attractive men who are Chad's and attractive women who are Stacy's. And of course, the incels don't fall into either category. They're not Chad's. They actually despise the Chad's and they're unable to attract the Stacy's. And of course, they also despise the Stacy's. Now, specifically looking at some of the incel groups that focus on vengeance, we see the incel rebellion and what's sometimes called the beta uprising or the beta male uprising. So what we see here is that the incels believe that a relatively small number of very attractive males have sex with attractive females, and therefore the incels cannot compete with them, with the people they call chads, and they cannot have sex with the people they call stacys. They believe that these men have an advantage because of online dating sites and social media sites that tend to focus on attractiveness and not on other areas where the incels may have an advantage of their own. So a lot of this is really about the physical attractiveness of the Chads, as they call them, and the Stacys, as they call them. Now, we see in reviews of website postings, which is really one of the ways we understand the incel ideology, because it's not studied well in terms of research at this point, that many in this community advocate violence against women. I mentioned that before. And there have been a series of violent incidents tied to people who identify themselves as part of the incel community. The number of violent instances is really unknown because we don't know what everyone was thinking at the time when they commit crimes. 
But there are a few crimes, specifically murders, that seem to be clearly tied to this ideology. Probably one of the most well-known occurred in Isla Vista, California on May 23, 2014. A man named Elliot Roger killed six people and injured 14 others before killing himself. He left behind a 137-page manifesto and social media post talking about his involuntary celibacy and how this is what led him to commit these murders. He described himself as the perfect guy and the supreme gentleman, which are two references we hear later on in this incel community. He also believed that he was superior and the true alpha male. So he had some really strong kind of extremist beliefs. In Roseburg, Oregon, on October 1st, 2015, we see a man named Chris Harper Mercer killed nine people and injured eight people before killing himself. He also left behind a manifesto that mentioned how angry he was that he did not have a girlfriend, and that manifesto mentioned Elliot Roger. In Aztec, New Mexico, on December 7, 2017, we see a man named William Atchison kills two people before killing himself, and he used the pseudonym Elliot Roger in online forums. So again, kind of connected back to the incel ideology. In Parkland, Florida, February 14, 2018, Nicholas Cruz kills 17 people and injures 17 others. Cruz had previously posted online that Elliot Roger would not be forgotten. In Toronto, Ontario, April 23, 2018, a man named Alec Manassian drives a van through the North York City Center Business District, killing 10 and injuring 16 people. He was arrested after trying to provoke an officer into shooting him. We see that he made social media posts where he referred to the incel rebellion and to Elliot Roger. And the last one I'll mention here occurred in Tallahassee, Florida, November 2nd, 2018. A man named Scott Byerly killed two women before killing himself. It was later discovered he identified himself as an incel, and he also mentioned Elliot Roger in social media postings. So with all this in mind, we see a great deal of disturbing behavior, murderous and criminal behavior, that's associated with some of the people in the incel community. Which brings us to the idea that there may be mental health and personality characteristics that are different for this community as compared to the general population. So first looking at the personality aspect, I'm going to use the five-factor model to describe the potential personality profile at work here. So the five-factor model contains five big traits. I remember them through the acronym OCEAN. Openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and eroticism. So the typical profile for a member of the incel community, again, especially someone who has an extremist view, would be low openness to experience, but that wouldn't always be the case because there could also be high openness to experience where sometimes we see psychoticism. Low conscientiousness, in general, I think that would be the case. Low extroversion. Low agreeableness, but again, not always, because sometimes if somebody's quite agreeable, they tend to trust people. And what could happen here is people could build trust with other members of the Sincel community, and that could lead to violence as they start to be easily influenced by others. In terms of neuroticism, typically we would see mid-range to high neuroticism, but again, there could be exceptions here too, especially if somebody's violent. They may actually have psychopathic characteristics, and that's typically associated with low neuroticism. Now, in terms of narcissism, we would expect to see a higher level of narcissism, but I think more so vulnerable narcissism as opposed to grandiose narcissism. So with vulnerable narcissism, we see characteristics like somebody who has a lot of resentment, shame, they're pessimistic, hypersensitive to criticism, socially awkward, having low self-esteem, self-hatred, and internalized anger. Now, just because somebody has this type of narcissism doesn't mean they couldn't have externalized anger as well. Because with grandiose and vulnerable narcissism, sometimes people move back and forth between these two expressions of narcissism. Now, another dynamic we see here is that the members of the incel community are socially isolated. They're dependent on the internet for connectivity to the outside world. So they feel rejected. They find others who feel the same way. And they commiserate. And this leads to increased frustration, anger, and sometimes to violence. So this kind of makes sense if you look at the personality profile and how that personality profile could interact with being socially isolated or how it could lead to being socially isolated. 
Now, on the mental health side, we see a lot of speculation about a number of different disorders. And one that I've seen a lot is narcissistic personality disorder. But I would think this is actually not overrepresented with people who call themselves incels, because NPD is really an extreme manifestation of grandiose narcissism, not vulnerable narcissism. But again, we could see some instances of narcissistic personality disorder. It's also possible that we would see some paranoid and maybe even schizotypal personality disorders. Both of those are from the cluster A personality disorders. And we may sometimes see schizophrenia, which of course has a relationship with psychoticism, like delusions and hallucinations. Now I mentioned psychopathy before. We could also see antisocial personality disorder. There's a bit of an overlap between these constructs, but one of the differences with antisocial personality disorder would be, of course, it's an official mental disorder, but it's also associated with a higher level of neuroticism, whereas psychopathy is really tied to low neuroticism, right? So we could see some antisocial personality disorder, but I would think this wouldn't be particularly common. Now, what may be more common in terms of mental health disorders would be ones related to depression, like major depressive disorder or persistent depressive disorder, disorders related to anxiety, like social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and agoraphobia. And we see a lot of speculation around autism spectrum disorder and how that disorder may be overrepresented in the incel community. Now, within this ideology, within the incel ideology, there's a lot of focus on physical attractiveness and the idea that incels can't compete with people who are attractive because attractiveness is the only thing society is concerned about. Physical attractiveness is an important predictor of successfully forming a romantic relationship, but it's certainly not the only predictor. My guess would be that for many of these people in the incel community, their mental health symptoms and personality traits contribute to them having trouble getting out to meet people and contribute to them being rejected. These same mental health symptoms would also magnify the effect of rejection. So put another way, we would see a low level of resilience. They would not have the same ability to bounce back once they're rejected. Again, with that vulnerable narcissism, they're hypersensitive to criticism. So criticism is really going to hurt them much more than it would hurt other people. And I think this is what sets off this kind of cycle of social isolation and maybe in some cases moving toward more extreme beliefs. So one question I hear about incels quite a bit is, are they dangerous? Well, I think when you see an extreme level of almost any ideology, there can be dangerousness associated with that. So there will be a small portion that represent a threat. And we see that in these attacks that I mentioned before. But for the vast majority of incels, it's unlikely that they would be violent. It's important to remember that these individuals are suffering and many would benefit from mental health care. And some of the related mental health symptoms do not facilitate someone reaching out and looking for help. For example, social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, agoraphobia, and depression. So those disorders are associated with somebody not looking for mental health treatment. So it really creates kind of a bad situation where the symptoms themselves tend to prevent the treatment. So as mental health professionals, we need to be aware of some of the challenges that would be experienced by members of the incel community, and also be aware that in some instances, there may be a level of dangerousness which should be addressed. So I know whenever I talk about topics like being involuntarily celibate and other areas like this, there are going to be different opinions, people who agree and disagree with me and who have other thoughts. Please put those opinions in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of the incel ideology to be interesting. Thanks for watching.